of news you can use. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about stagflation. The reason that I want to talk about this, uh, and I talked previously in two previous episodes regarding uh, that, uh, is last late last week, the former chairman of the Fed, Ben Bernanke, came out in an op-ed piece in the New York Times and talked about stagflation. Uh, his conclusion is that we are definitely going to hit a stagflationary period later this year. Uh, we're currently heading that direction now. Uh, just to back up a little bit and tell you a little bit about stagflation. By the way, uh, Kevin will attach to the, the bottom of this YouTube video uh, copies of uh, video one and two, stagflation one, stagflation two, that we did earlier this year. So you can get a, a more uh, complete background on how stagflation works. But just to give you a quick summary overview, stagflation occurs when the growth in the economy slows down unemployment increases and inflation goes up at the same time. When all those things happen, you have a technical stagflationary period. Last time we had that was in the early 1970s, actually in 1974. And it was precipitated at that point by a supply chain disruption, actually is what happened. There was what uh, they called an oil embargo from the Arab countries that we were buying primarily all of our oil from. Now we're less oil dependent on them, we're more oil dependent on ourselves and Russia, uh, which also now is today a supply chain disruptor. We had a perfect storm in the last couple of years with COVID slowing everything down. Uh, we talked last year about how we weren't able to bring goods into the country from overseas because the ports were shut down and how that's taken forever to get back up to speed uh, to, to bring in things. And there's been some long-term issues in supply of products that we need. For example, chips um, that they need to build cars. We still are not back up to speed on that. The foreign factories are not up to speed completely yet. And we're not able to produce some of the hard goods like cars that uh, at the level that we needed to. That This has sparked inflation, but it is also now slowing down the economy and on top of that, there's been what they call the, the great resignation. A lot of people starting last November started quitting their jobs en masse. Um, and that has actually sparked, believe it or not, a, a tick up in unemployment. So there's this big demand for employees to work, but because they don't have enough, they're reducing manufacturers, service industries are reducing their overall need for people. So give you an example. I went to a restaurant last week that used to have an indoor outdoor space and everybody was employed. There was all the tables were full. They've had to shut down part of that restaurant and actually had to lay off some people because they couldn't get enough cooks to be able to handle all the hours and all the tables they had. So literally it went from people quitting the job to now they had to let go of additional people because they weren't able, there was a supply chain problem in that service thing. Anyway, uh, stagflation, uh, like I said, the last time it happened uh, was 1974. And the solution at that point in time is President Nixon took us off the gold standard. So at one point in time, prior to 1974, uh, the United States economy, for every dollar, there was X amount of gold. Uh, and the way that they fixed the stagflationary thing uh, was twofold. They took us off the gold standard, so dollars weren't hooked to gold anymore, so that we could print more dollars, and it didn't matter. We didn't have to have gold in the vaults of Fort Knox to back that up. And number two is they cranked up the Fed, the Federal Reserve, to raise interest rates as a way to dampen inflation. Now, the Fed has been trying to do that for a few months, uh, but as we've talked about on previous episodes of News You Can Use, I believe they were late to the party. They should have probably hit this thing late last year. They waited until the spring this year to start raising rates. I think it's going to be too little too late. And there is not a good cure for stagflation. There's not a you know magic requisite, magic wand that can be applied to fix that thing. Um, what happened, and the same thing happened in the 70s. They were able to tamp it down for a short period of time, 76, 77, got a little better. Uh, by the time 80s, uh, 79, 80 came, uh, the Fed was cranking interest rates up ad nauseum. And for those of you who were around at that point, you probably remember interest rates that were 20%. People were buying houses with an 18.5% mortgage at that point. And they're still buying 
there was still a demand, uh, first time home buyers. But uh, since then, now we've come up with some other lending products that will help ease our, our side of the business, the housing side. So let's veer over and talk about that a little bit more. Um, you know, what do we do in our business? Okay, the demand will continue because people, new first time home buyers are continually coming on the market. And we're right in the heart of the batting order from the proper demographic for first time home buyers, which is millennials. So we're at the early to mid part of the millennial age group. So at least the next six, seven, eight years, there's going to be big demand for first time home buyers from that millennial group. Now, these folks, just like in the 1970s and 80s, these folks were almost immune from interest rates, not completely, um, but it took an on fire market flaming out of control and made it a hot market and it stayed good uh, for real estate through that period of time. Not as many people could buy houses because interest rates were high. That's what we're seeing today. There's not as many buyers because interest rate shock has kept some of them on the sidelines. I predict some of those Maybe a large portion of those folks will come back into the market uh, later this year when we come up with some new loan products. Uh, and by new loan products, I mean adjustable rate mortgages and other tricky creative things that will initially be a teaser rate to bring people into the market uh, because there's still a ton of cash out there to loan on houses. So the, the bankers of this world, the mortgage brokers will come up with other products like they did in the late 2005, six, seven uh, period of time when they were offering uh, kind of smoke and mirrors mortgages. It won't be that bad, I don't think, but I think they will come up with some product uh, that will have a 3% teaser rate for the first four, five, six, seven years, and then it will adjust up. And that I think will help save the, uh, housing industry. Uh, we're going to have to have something like that because not everybody can buy for cash. Most first time home buyers have to use some type of government based financing, uh, FHA, Fannie, Freddie, those kinds of things, um, where they can put a low down payment and they can afford X as a monthly payment. But the X now is too high uh, because even at five to 6% interest where we are now, it's made those payments that used to be six, seven, eight hundred, twelve hundred dollars. And a lot of folks can't afford that. So we're seeing this temporary pause. You're seeing the market, you know, grind to a halt. In some areas, the prices are dropping dramatically. Uh, in Los Angeles, over the last month, we've seen a million dollar house come down to 900,000 um, and it's still dropping because there's just not enough buyers out there who can afford what we've got going at this point in time. So expect the, the Mortgage Bankers Association to come to the rescue. Uh, with new products, assuming the government doesn't stick their nose in it, say you can't do these things. Um, expect the Fed to continue to raise interest rates, but I don't know if that's really going to adversely affect us much more than it has so far uh, in terms of buyer ability, if there is such a term, or, or the demand from buyers to buy houses. Uh, I think the demand will still be there. And Keep in mind that every month that goes by when buyers can't buy houses is more people on the sidelines in the buyer pool who wanna buy. So a lot of people couldn't buy the last two years because the market was going up and up and up and they couldn't afford it. Now the market is flattened out, stabilized with a few exceptions around the country, but uh, you know the buyers can't afford it now because the payments are going up. And so this buyer pool gets bigger, 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 bigger. And every day when that, as it gets bigger, the seller pool starts getting bigger as well because death, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, medical issues, family issues, job issues, these things happen in a normal course, good economy, bad economy, stagflation, normal economy, doesn't matter. Uh, people are still getting divorced. Uh, they still die. And all of that, all those situations precipitate more sellers of houses. When somebody dies, they don't need a house anymore, right? So that house has to get resold. So you're getting more sellers and you're getting more buyers, which is perfect for us in this market uh, because it's not a numbers thing. It's just a matter of figuring out how to get this widget, this, this square peg in this round hole, which by the way, you can do. Uh, you've just got to figure out how to make it work. So in the transactional engineering space, which we're in, uh, you are go primarily golden opportunity uh, over the next, I'd say, year or two, potentially two years, 
uh, where you can use creative financing techniques like I expect the mortgage bankers will start doing. And you can put people into homes, uh, you know, and a lot of these folks have saved, especially millennials, have saved a lot of down payment money. Uh, I think option consideration, that type of thing. And a lot of sellers are going to need to get out of their situation quickly. So you should be able to buy more subject twos and get more seller financing. And then you should find a lot more buyers who have a lot more cash but can't get a loan. Perfect opportunity, even though we've got a perfect storm in the economy with stagflation on the horizon, it's a perfect opportunity for all of us to go out there and make a lot of money. So keep your eyes and ears open. Make sure you get back on these calls, ask lots of questions. We'll tell you how to, how to participate in this thing, how to make money from it, um, and, how, and primarily how to keep yourself safe. So uh, it's always good if you can be safe and make a lot of money.